Hey, hey, that's a really nice RC car part you have there. Uh, thanks. It's actually a perfect copy of a Traxxas slash A-arm. Wow, we a copy? How'd you make that? Uh, well, I 3D scanned it using my new Creality CR Scan Otter and then printed out with carbon fiber reinforced nylon for maximum strength. That's so cool. Can you show me? No problem. Load the video. So for some time now, I've been thinking of getting a 3D scanner to help with some of my projects. First off, I really like the idea of using it for RC car parts. Uh, if you had an RC car that broke a steering knuckle or an A-arm or something like that, you could easily just scan it and uh, print a new one. Or if you knew you were going to have a specific part on an RC car that was going to break fairly often, you could even preemptively scan those parts. Now you are going to have the issue that 3D printed parts generally aren't as strong as injection molded parts that you'd buy from an RC car store. But if, like us, you're somewhere remote and it's hard to get to an RC car store and you don't want to wait for weeks and weeks and weeks, something like scanning RC car parts and printing them yourself seems like a pretty good solution. Now I've also been designing and printing some larger objects lately, like surfboards. Well, I can do a bit of 3D design, that's not my forte. So so if I could just scan one that I really like into the computer, slice it up, and throw it onto my 3D printer, that's something that would work a whole lot better for me. So I've played around a little bit with some apps on my phone in the past in order to do some 3D scanning. One that I actually really liked is this one right here called PolyScan. And uh, you can see here I scanned a hat that was sitting on the ground and it does a pretty good job. Uh, probably not to the detail you'd want for 3D printing something out, but if you just wanted to like add an asset for a mobile game or something like that, uh, it's more than serviceable. But if you've ever wondered what you'd be capable of if you had an actual quality 3D scanner, well today we're going to find out. So recently a rep that's associated with Creality uh, sent me this guy right here. This is the CR Scan Otter. This is a pretty kick-ass scanner and it retails for about $899. Again, I don't have a ton of experience with 3D scanners, but the internet is telling me the CR Scan Otter is the bigger brother of the Ferret. Um, and there's also a bigger one as well called the Raptor. The Ferret can do up to a 0.1 millimeter accuracy and the Otter here can do up to a 0.02 millimeter accuracy, which if it works is definitely good enough for our needs here today. This guy will scan up to two meters cubed and it also has dual stereo lenses. Now this isn't gonna be an unboxing and review video. There's lots of better people on the internet who can do that kind of stuff. We're just gonna be using this thing today, putting it through its paces and seeing how useful it can be for the type of projects we like to do here at RC Printer. So let's see what we got. Instructions, scanning pad, strap, another strap, sticky dot locators here. This is actually a calibration board. Test scan object, a couple of connector cords, and this is it right here. It's got a whole bunch of different lenses on the front, a whole bunch of different sensors as well. I'm excited to give this a shot, so let's go find something to scan. All right, here we have one of the most popular RC cars of all time. This is a Traxxas Slash. This is actually my son's vehicle. It's actually got a broken uh, bumper on this one side here, so we're gonna tear that off and see if we can reprint it. Also commonly on uh, an RC car, one of the things that'll break is the A-arms, and so I'm gonna pull off one of these front A-arms as well and preemptively uh, scan that one, see if we can print a new one and see how well it does. All right, so we got our pieces removed and cleaned up a bit here. Uh, this is the A-arm, and here's the side bumper. Now this piece is broken. I could have gone and just removed the piece from the other side, but I wanted to try just quickly gluing it back together with some CA glue and uh, then see how that turns out. All right, there we go. It's back together. It's probably not going to hold together in a crash, but good enough for scanning. So. Uh, it's going to take me a little bit here to plug this scanner in and figure out how it works, but I'll be back with you in a minute once we got that settled. Alright, so we got our first test print here figured out, and here's how it went. We plugged the scanner into the computer. The computer is further away than the length of the cable that it came with, so I used a USB extender cable. Uh, it's a 10-foot extension cable, and it seemed to work without any loss of quality. I then had to install the Creality software on my computer, which installed without any issues. Upon first load of the software, it updated the firmware in the Otter here, and that uh, worked flawlessly. And then a page pops up, gives you a few getting started tips. A couple things in there that I did want to note. It says if it's a shiny object, make sure you use a scanning spray. If it's a flat or solid color object, use reflective markers. And it says through holes are also not recommended. So we're definitely going to have some screw holes in our parts here that I'm hoping the scanner is going to be able to pick up. So we'll see how that goes. It also says creating a stable working distance that's consistent is very important. So we set up a uh, little turntable here and we put our black scanning mat on top of it. 
And then I set the scanner up on a little tripod here, which helped keep the standing distance very consistent. And our first test worked out quite well. So that seems pretty easy. Let's see how it goes with one of our Traxxas pieces here. Alright, so for the past couple of days I've been playing around with the CR Scan Otter here, trying to figure out a good way of getting 3D scans of these RC car parts. Initially I was having a lot of trouble scanning these little parts, and we'll go through some of the reasons why, but I have actually been able to come up with a good, uh, repeatable process for doing it. Here's an example. This is a uh, 3D printed copy of a scan of this A-arm here. It printed out quite well. Uh, Scale-wise, it looks to be exactly the same, uh, which is pretty cool actually. I didn't expect the scale to come out perfect. So kind of the biggest issue with scanning uh, these RC car parts is that they're black. Black absorbs light, and that makes it really, really hard for a scanner to pick up. And another one is that they're kind of flat and uh, have two sides. And so, well, you can scan one side easily. When you flip it over, it has a hard time tracking and, and merging the mapping from the, the one side to the other. So I'll go through my process. But first, let's just take this guy and get her installed. One of the things to note is that any through holes for screws are not going to scan in nicely. Uh, so those are something you're going to have to drill out with uh, some drill bits. You can kind of get the location off the scan there of where they need to be but uh, they're not going to come out perfect, so uh, you need to measure your screws. If it's an M3 screw and it's supposed to slide nicely through the hole, drill in a 3mm hole. And then on the flip side, if the screw is supposed to thread into the plastic part and it's an M3 screw, you're going to want to go with probably like a 2.6, 2.7mm hole, something like that. So yeah, let's get this guy installed. All right, there we go. All the pivots installed. Now let's get it on the truck. All right, there we go, it's all installed. If I'm being honest with you, I am shocked at how well that worked. The scale is absolutely perfect. Everything fit perfectly. All of the pivot joints uh, meshed perfectly where the shock enters the A-arm here. That went in perfectly as well. Everything is just absolutely perfect. So as long as you drill your holes perfectly, I don't think you'll have any problems. Okay, so let me take you through the process that works to get you from this to this. First off, let's talk about the surface. This is the black mat that's included. Uh, you're not going to want to use this one. Black on black doesn't show up too well. I've tried a number of different surfaces. I tried gray, I tried uh, white like this tabletop. They all worked fine, but the one that I actually liked was this one right here, which is uh, a green one. But any common color other than black seems to work just fine. I put my mat on top of a uh, turntable surface. This one here is just uh, one that my wife has for baking. This one seems to work really good. You can spend a lot of money and, and buy fancy automated moving turntables. Uh, but just moving it manually by hand seems to work totally fine. I find it's actually kind of nice to be able to turn it by hand. If you start losing tracking at one point, you can easily just reverse direction. Now along with the turntable, it definitely helps to have a little tripod. Uh, this is a cheap little tripod I have off Amazon. Um, and it just screws right into the bottom of your 3D scanner here. And it's really nice because it holds it in place uh, as you're turning the turntable. The legs on this tripod here are about 12 inches long. And it seems to be about the right length for uh, scanning RC car parts there. Now one of the most important things I found when trying to scan these RC car parts is not to use the smallest setting in the Creality Scan app. Uh, you want to be using the medium setting. And that's just because in order to pick up the tracking on these objects, you really want to have more than the full item in view uh, at any one point in time. And I found that like while it is possible to scan on the smallest settings, it does cause a lot of headaches and the quality that you get from the medium setting is more than good enough for an RC car part. Now the final thing that I found is that in order to scan these black objects you're going to need to coat them in something. That could be something as simple as baby powder here, uh, which I found worked really well. I also had good success with baking powder. Uh, flour worked as well, but it's not quite as fine as baking powder, so if you have baking powder I'd recommend that. Basically you just get it all over the part, knock it off so there's uh, no lumps or anything like that. Place it down in the middle of your scanning surface and uh, go to town. Now if you want to step up from baby powder you can buy 3D scanning sprays online. Now unfortunately in my location I wasn't able to get one quickly on Amazon or anything like that. After doing some research online I found you can go to any drugstore and just pick up some foot spray powder. I have Dr. Scholl's Odorex here but I think any of them will work. 
and basically you spray the object and it turns white. Now this sticks on to the object a lot more than like a ba baking powder would. You just have to rinse off baking powder, whereas this one, you can end up scrubbing your piece in order to get it off. But it works really, really well, so let's give it a try. So you just give it a quick spray, let it dry off, and it turns out looking like this. All right, we've got our object set up, so let's head over to the computer and we'll start scanning. So here we are in the Creality Scan software, and first off, we're gonna click New Scan, and then we're gonna give the project a name. Under Object, we're gonna leave it at Normal. Under Size, this is where we're gonna set it to Medium instead of Small, which will reduce the potential quality a bit, but will also make it way easier to complete a full scan of this black object. Under Feature, we're going to be tracking by Geometry. For Accuracy, we're going to go with High Quality, and then under Turntable, we'll select Yes, because we're using a turntable for this. Then we'll click Scan, and the object shows up here, and you can see on our distance meter on the left that we want to try and keep it near the Optimize area in the middle to get the best quality scan. We'll move our object, if required, so that it's centered and at the right distance. Then we'll click the Player Start button on the top right, and we'll slowly start rotating the table. Now, if and when it turns red, that means you're losing tracking, so just hold on for a minute or you can even back up and wait for the tracking to be regained and everything to turn green before you continue to move on. The more of your object that gets scanned, the more the tracking will recognize the object and the less red you'll see. Now that I've scanned in one orientation of the object, I'm gonna change my camera view a bit and scan again. Now I'm gonna pause my scan and turn the object on its side. This is going to complicate the tracking somewhat, so when I orient the object, I'm going to need to place it in a way that the program can pick it up. So basically pointing it the same side I've already scanned. And then I'm going to wait until the object turns green so I know tracking is working, and then I can continue on with my scan. Now you can see here that when I try to go around to the back side of the object, I lose tracking. So I reorient my camera a little bit higher, and that seems to work much better. Now once I've made it around to the back side of the object, I'm golden, the geometry-based tracking is now much improved, and I can continue on my way. Now you can keep pausing your scan and reorienting the object and scanning again to increase the quality of the scan. On most objects, I'd recommend at least three orientations, and then you can click the stop button and the program will optimize your point cloud and you'll end up with something that looks like this. So this looks like a pretty awesome copy of the part. There may be some erroneous points on your scan that the scanner's picked up, which you can remove by circling them with your mouse while holding down the left mouse button and the shift key at the same time and then hitting delete. But our point cloud looks perfect here. Now it's time to turn our point cloud into a mesh. We're gonna start that by letting the program optimize our point cloud and I'll leave the resolution setting at its currently recommended 0.1 millimeters, which is totally fine for our scan here. Once our point cloud is optimized, we can now go to the mesh settings and we can choose the number of faces or triangles we want our final object to have. The more faces, the better the quality, but the longer the file will take to process. You can also choose to automatically fill any holes and close your object into a solid, which I'm doing here because I want to send the file straight to my printer. With the settings I've chosen, the mesh takes about 30 seconds to process. And here's our final result, which looks pretty awesome, and it's ready for export. When we click the export button, we can export it as an STL or OBJ. I'm choosing STL, which is commonly used for 3D slicing. Then we just give the file a name and click save. Next, we'll open our slicer and we'll import the STL file we just created and it'll show up on our build plate. Now it's not gonna be oriented in the best way for 3D printing, so I'm gonna drop it down onto a flat surface that I think would work well. You also need to make sure you choose the right filament for your project, which we have set here as PLA, but in a bit, we're gonna try some different filaments as well. Next, I want to print this solid, so I'm going to choose 100% infill, and then I'm going to add some supports on the build plate only to support the overhangs on the underside of the part. I'm also increasing the number of perimeters a little bit, which is probably optional in this case, but it's a force a habit. Then I'll click Slice, review my print, and send it off to the printer. All right, so that's how we're creating 3D models of our RC car parts. You can see I've done it with the A-arm, and I've also done it with a side bumper here. Um, this is a PLA version of this side bumper. If I just tear off these supports, it is a almost perfect replica. Uh, I just have to drill out these holes a little bit to make sure that they're going to fit the screws that I want, but otherwise it looks pretty perfect. Now in order to increase the strength of these 3D printed parts here, uh, we can use a few different materials. One that's going to work for things like side bumpers is maybe this one here. This is printed out in uh, eSun 95A TPU. Um, and if I remove the supports, which is a little bit harder with TPU. 
We've created a copy of the model that has a bit of squish to it, and this might work great for parts like bumpers. Now what would be really great is if we could print out RC car parts uh, in a material that's going to rival the injection molded plastics that uh, RC car parts are normally made out of. And that's why I have acquired some of this. This is Polymaker's PA6 carbon fiber reinforced nylon. This is supposed to be a very strong and durable filament. It's not one that I've ever used before and it's quite expensive. But if we can print it, it should give us some pretty strong parts. So we'll go and test this out and see how hard it is to print and see if we can't get some of these parts made of something a little more durable than PLA. Okay, so I've been playing around with this Polymaker uh, PA6CF nylon and uh, it's pretty cool stuff. The filament itself uh, feels very wiry. Um, it's kind of like a carbon fiber rod, honestly. Definitely doesn't feel as flexible as like a PLA or even an ABS. I don't have a lot of experience with it, but from the filaments I've tested before, it kind of feels like the wood fiber PLA. There's definitely a mixture of materials inside it uh, that are keeping it rigid. Initially, when I first went to print it, it didn't want to stick to the bed too well, but a little bit of PVA glue made it stick really nice. From doing some research on the internet, uh, apparently if you get a Garolite bed surface, uh, that helps stick nylon really well. Uh, so that's something you could try as well, but I had great success with just a little bit of PVA glue. Once I was able to get it to stick to the bed, I didn't have any issues with any of my test prints, and so I went straight to printing one of these uh, A-arms, and it printed flawlessly. This one here is printed with 100% infill um, at a 0.2 millimeter layer height. The surface finish is really, really nice. Pretty much nicer than any of the other filaments I've ever used. Nylon generally has a bit of stringing to it, and I didn't get any stringing with this at, at all. For my print settings and my slicer program, I just used a Fiber 3 PA Pure Pro filament profile, which is based on a PA6 nylon, which is what this is, and it worked great. I didn't have to make any changes whatsoever. The supports all stuck to the build plate as well, and while well, getting them off the print was a little bit harder than PLA, it really wasn't too bad. Now obviously you're going to pay a lot more for carbon fiber infused nylon than you will for a regular ABS or uh, PLA filament. So this piece right here cost about $1.40 to print, whereas a piece out of regular PLA or ABS, um, that's going to be maybe like $0.35. Cents. So it's definitely not the cheapest way to make parts with a 3D printer, but when you compare it to a Traxxas part, it's not too bad. So my impression is it feels quite light and strong, but how strong is it? Uh, let's find out. I've printed some test pieces here. These are 5 millimeters thick and 25 millimeters wide and about 100 millimeters long, and I printed one in PLA, one in ABS and one in carbon fiber nylon here and I set up a little jig on my workbench over there So we'll go over and uh, see how well they do. Okay, so we're gonna clamp these pieces into this vise here And we're gonna swing this hammer. You see I've marked it from 1 all the way up to 10 These simple prints here are just printed with uh, two walls and 15% infill So I don't think they're gonna be too too strong But hopefully they give us a decent gauge of the differences between these materials. So we'll start with the PLA And we'll start at about one, and then we'll go to two, three, all right, so obviously our hammer isn't heavy enough, we're going to switch over to a heavier hammer. All right, here we go again. One, two. Five. So the PLA lasted to five. Next we'll try the ABS. One. The ABS only lasted till four. Last but not least we'll try our carbon fiber nylon. One. So the carbon fiber nylon actually did last longer than the other ones, but it also didn't break along the surface like the other ones did. Now you can see here some of the layer lines on the side split, and I don't think that would happen if we had printed it at 100% infill, which is what we're doing for the RC car parts. You can see the PLA and the ABS here cracked right along the surface. So now this isn't super scientific, but I'm pretty confident in saying that if you print your RC car parts out of CF nylon, uh, rather than an ABS or a PLA, you're going to get better results. Alright, so there you have it. As far as scanning RC car parts with a 3D scanner, such as the Creality CR Otter, uh, you can definitely make very, very close copies, and if you print them out of something like CF Nylon, you're probably going to have decent results like we have here.
And you might find in a pinch that this is something that works out well for you. But we're going to switch gears now a little bit and I'm going to try and scan something a little bit bigger. As you may know, we've been spending some time this year 3D printing surfboards. And I have this guy right here, which is the Liquid Force Rocket. This particular one is a 4.8 and it's a little bit small for me. And I would like to print out one of these that's maybe four or so inches longer. And I think that would hold me a little better. And also, this one's pretty heavy. I think we can get the weight down. So we're gonna see if we can scan this one into the computer and uh, make a couple modifications and print this guy out as well. Now I have been playing around with it a little bit already and I haven't had any successful scans yet. I've been trying different tracking methods. The default one in the system is uh, geometry-based tracking. And because this piece is so long, you can't scan it all at once. And when you move from like a section like here to a section like here, there's really no massive change in geometry, so it has a, a trouble with tracking. I had a little bit more success using the pattern-based tracking, which is going to be looking for a pattern on the object. And I was actually able to create a scan, but when I wrapped around to the other side of the board, it didn't mesh perfectly. Uh, so what I'm going to try now is using these tracking dots. And if you place these tracking dots all over the board um, at intervals maybe 20 centimeters apart, uh, it should be able to help you with the tracking. And I'm hoping we can get a complete scan when we move from the top of the board to the back of the board. I have watched a few YouTube videos on doing this kind of thing. And what I've seen other people do is they'll scan the top of the board and then they'll scan the bottom of the board and then in their software they'll mesh that together. But we'll see first if we can get the whole thing scanned completely. And if not, then we'll just scan each half and I'll have to find a way to merge them later. So let's give it a shot. First things first, we're going to remove the fins so I don't include those. And I'm going to use a little bit of masking tape here just to cover up those holes. Now for the dots. All right, that's almost all the dots that it came with, so let's start scanning and see how it goes. We'll start a new project here in Creality Scan, give it a name. In the settings, we're going to choose large size this time, and for feature, we're going to choose marker instead of geometry. Then we'll make sure turntable set to no and click scan. Now we'll get into place and start scanning by pressing the record button on the scanner. You can see here the scan's working well, but even with the dots I lose tracking when I try to wrap around to the other side of the board, so I'm going to have no choice but to scan both sides of the board individually and try to merge those together later. Here you can see I've laid the board down flat and propped it up with a small office garbage can to get a clean scan of one side of the board. After scanning the first side of the board, I stop the scan and my point cloud will start processing. After that I can go through and select any erroneous data that the scanner picked up and delete it. All right, so I just found out that Creality Scan does actually have the capability of taking multiple scans and merging those together. So we're gonna give that a try now. We'll go ahead and scan the other side of this board into the project and then see if we can merge them. Back in Creality Scan on the left side of the page, we're gonna select New Project and we're gonna select the same settings as the first scan and then we'll scan the other side of the board. Once the scanning's finished, we'll press the stop button to let it complete. Then we'll let it process and remove any erroneous data just like we did on the first side of the board. And now we have two scans showing on the left of the page in our multi-project board. Now before we can try to merge anything, we have to optimize the point clouds of both of our scans to whatever resolution we want. I chose to reduce my resolution a little bit in hopes of making the processing time take a little bit less. After optimizing, my scans look mostly okay, but I have this strange flange on the outside and I'm not sure where that comes from. Now that both scans are optimized, we can head down to point cloud merging. First I'll try automatic merging, which fails, and then I'll quickly move on to manual merging, which is what most people online seem to be recommending. With manual merging, you select both scans into the top two windows, and then you manually choose five different points around the scans to match up with each other, and then the system magically uses those points to determine how the scans fit together. Now unfortunately, this didn't work for me either for some reason, and I suspect it has something to do with either the scans not having enough overlapping data, or that flange around both the scans that appeared after optimizing. I'm not sure, but it's going to take more testing, and that's all the time I have to play with this project right now. So I'll have to find a way later to either merge these two scans in a CAD program, or figure out where I messed up in Creality Scan. But it's cool to see that with this little scanner, I can scan items both large and small. 
All right, so that's about all the time we have right now to play around with the Creality CR Scan Otter and the Creality Scan software. I'd like to thank Creality for sending me this bad boy for absolutely free just in return for making a video. Unfortunately, at the end there, I wasn't able to get that surfboard merged, but I bet you with a little time playing around, I'll be able to figure something out. It's really cool to see you can use a handheld scanner like this for scanning really large objects as well as really small stuff like RC car parts. And it actually really blows me away that you can get results that are detailed enough and the scale is perfect enough that you can bolt them right onto your RC car once you drill out the holes without having to make any edits to the 3D file that Creality Scan has generated. So that's awesome and something I'll keep working on in the future. Until next time, if you're looking for any cool ideas of 3D printed RC project to build, kits, parts, or instructions on how to build them, make sure you keep checking us out at rcprinter.com. Till next time.